Hi, my name is Arjun Ponduri. Uh, I'm a fourth year medical student at Wake Forest, and I'm just going to be talking about some radiographic features of rheumatoid arthritis versus osteoarthritis. So I'm going to start by discussing rheumatoid arthritis. Some notable features include marginal erosions, which is seen here with the red arrows. They look like little bites out of the bone on either side of the joints. Soft tissue swelling is also present. There's no arrows for this, but this patient has clear areas of mild soft tissue swelling surrounding the joints, particularly the MCP joints. The yellow arrows represent periarticular osteopenia. Notice how the bones look more lucent right around the joints. This is present throughout both hands, but here's just a few arrows. The blue arrows represent joint space narrowing, and this involves many of the carpal joints. This is not as severe involving the joints of the hands. Now I'm going to discuss rheumatoid arthritis in the hands, wrists, and feet. In the hands and wrists, there's a predilection for the PIP, MCP, ulnar styloid, and triquetrum joints. The DIP is usually spared. Some late changes include subchondral cysts, ulnar deviation subluxation, which we can see here with the red arrows. That's ulnar deviation of the second to fifth MCP joints. We also have the hitchhiker's thumb deformity, which we can see with the yellow arrow here. And the blue arrows represent the pencil and cup deformities involving the third and fifth PIP joints. The feet have similar areas of rheumatoid arthritis to the hands. They also have the hammer toe deformity and hallux valgus. Now I'm gonna discuss rheumatoid arthritis in the elbow and shoulder. The red arrow represents abnormal soft tissue attenuation anterior to the distal humerus, and this represents a joint effusion. The yellow arrows show joint space narrowing, and this is most pronounced involving the ulnohumeral articulation. The blue arrows show periarticular erosions, most pronounced involving the proximal radioulnar articulation. Finally, the green arrow shows erosions of the distal clavicle. Now I'll discuss rheumatoid arthritis in the hip, knee, and spine. The red arrow shows concentric hip joint space narrowing. The yellow arrow shows abnormal soft tissue attenuation anterior to the distal femur, and this is consistent with the joint effusion in the knee. The blue arrow shows subluxation of C1 on C2 with abnormal widening of the lantodental interval. As you can see, the bones are diffusely demineralized. Now I'll discuss osteoarthritis. The red arrows represent joint space narrowing. There's clear joint space narrowing throughout the hands and wrists, but the red arrows identify the joints that are most severely involved. This distribution is very typical for osteoarthritis. Notice how the DIP joints are involved, unlike rheumatoid arthritis. The yellow arrows represent subchondral sclerosis. Notice the increased periarticular attenuation in contrast to the periarticular osteopenia seen with rheumatoid arthritis. Finally, the blue arrows represent osteophytes. Some final points about osteoarthritis. The red arrow represents a large subchondral cyst in the right acetabulum. The yellow arrow represents severe right hip joint space narrowing, which is most pronounced superiorly, unlike rheumatoid arthritis, where joint space narrowing is more uniformly concentric. The blue arrows show areas of erosive osteoarthritis involving the PIP and DIP joints. It can be easy to confuse this for erosions from rheumatoid arthritis, but unlike rheumatoid arthritis, there is involvement of the DIP joints and corresponding osteophytes and subchondral sclerosis.